welcome everyone to a new video myself saswat so today we are starting this new series called checkmate times where we will be discussing about chess events and chess news that happened recently or any forthcoming and we have with us the founder of chess gaja grandmaster priyadarshan welcome priyadarshan hello saswat uh, great to see this initiative where we'll be giving uh, you know updates on new chess events and general chess updates so the first um episode so uh more like a trial run we'll see how it goes yeah so starting with the candidates tournament is around the corner so can you share us some important details about it so you know candidates is a very important tournament in uh, the chess community because it decides who is going to challenge the world champion for a you know a world championship match that that takes place right and now that magnus has not shown interest uh, to play in candidates and has also kind of you know um, um given up on the world championship title basically now that dingleren is the world champion uh, even though the strongest player by rating is magnus uh, this candidate is um, an important tournament uh, from that perspective and it is being held in uh, canada this time and they're combining the both uh, the open and women section combining as in separate sections but they are playing in the same venue and the location and same dates and uh, it is starting in april april 3 uh, and uh, important event of uh, for the players who are participating because all of them have a chance to be a world championship challenger and if they win the world championship then they become world champion so because of that it has so much importance and a lot of stakes in it and uh, players have all qualified by different routes they had you know rating uh, via rating via being like you know the former uh, like world championship like the person who lost the world championship match so on world cup and so on so there are multiple routes for these players to qualify and there are uh, you know eight participants in the open section and uh, eight participants in the women section so that is um, this and this time it's very uh, special from an indian audience perspective because we've always had only anand uh, all these years being sole representative in the open section more or less and this time around we have three participants out of the eight in the open section which are from in, uh, which are indian players you have you know pragnananda you have gukesh you have uh, vidit and uh, so three out of eight um, you know statistically increases the odds of an indian player you know qualifying for the uh, i mean winning the candidates and qualifying for the world championship match so we'll see uh, other players in this event are you know nepomni ashley is there ali reza is there nakamura is there and then you have nijat abdazov there is karuana as well so very uh, strong field of players in this um, the open section and uh, i mean it's going to be very exciting in terms of like uh, like what's going to happen who is going to win there are obviously some favorites and some are not so favorites like you know very uh, like not really favorite to win the event in terms of open section uh, women section is um, like i think very much more um, closer in terms of uh, like uh, like in terms of the players as in like who might win i think is like very very um, debatable there's no clear favorites i feel like in open section in comparison to the uh, men uh, or the open section that's my take so far and in terms of uh, players whom um, okay like as i said statistically indians have good chances indian players in the open section but if i have to say like there is a clear clear favorite or someone whom i think is a favorite or whom i might pick is i would go actually with karuana not uh, any of the indian players because karuana is super experienced um he's played the world championship match before he lost once he's played multiple candidates um events before and uh, this might be like you know he might be thinking this is his really best best chance to qualify and then go and play in the world championship match and try to win it so he might have more um hunger to win i feel uh, as he's been competing for 
few editions of candidates already in terms of it. And one detail I forgot to add is in the women's section also, we have two Indian participants. We have Aishali and Hampi. Uh, so overall, we have five players out of the 16, eight men and eight uh, women's section. A 16 of 16, five of them are from India. So, yeah, so my favorite or whom I would pick is more like Karuana in the open section. And in women's section, as I said, it's super close. Um, but I feel either it will be Gori Ajkina because she's the highest rated uh, or Hampi. Uh, Hampi, I mean, it's incredible to uh, see Hampi competing in the elite level for so many years. Uh, and still, like, you know, still also being part of candidates and because most of the other players are comparatively way younger. She might be the oldest participant in the women's section, I feel like. So So these two players, Hampi, because she has a lot of experience, she has a chance and obviously she's very high rated in the field as well. Or Goryachkina, she has the highest fidelity rating in the event or uh, in the women's section. So this is my take on candidates and uh, yeah, excited. Let's see what happens. Pro leads a very important tournament, and those who want to stay updated with the candidates to the news can subscribe to the newsletter of Chess Kaja or follow us on Instagram, where we keep updating you about important news related to chess. Next question: National Rapid and Blitz tournament ended recently. Can you share us with the winner and some insights about this tournament? So this National Rapid and Blitz is a key feature in Indian national championship calendar you know we have uh, the like the big classical nationals that's one other than that the rapid and blitz generally rapid and blitz are held together always and this time around uh, it was a fairly strong event might not be the strongest of all because around nine grandmasters from india participated so that's um, like you know once one eighth of the indian grandmas close to one eighth or one ninth of the grandmasters from india playing so it did not have the full field of all the strong players, but still fairly strong field and about 50 title players participated. And in both the rapid section as well as the blitz section, Master Ditta and Ghosh of West Bengal won the event like outright. It was not tied or something. He scored more points than the second part, second place participant. Uh, and rapid and blitz events are always uh, dicey because a lot of young uh, underrated kids will cause a lot of upsets. Uh, so it's still like, you know, to see a grandmaster winning it without any big upsets was, I think, uh, was a very good result in general. And uh, the same player winning both Rapid and Blitz doesn't happen often. I think it happened once or twice before, like once Aravind Chidambram, uh, grandmaster, he won it like that. He was the champion in all formats. I don't know, I don't remember which year, but he won Rapid, Blitz, and the standard championship also in one of the years. So this time we have the same, um, like one champion for both sections, rapid as well as blitz. So it's a pretty um, big result for the time. It has done many rating changes recently. Can you explain us a bit about these changes? So, so, so you know, in March 2024, a lot of changes happened to the rating systems. These changes were announced a few months ago, but they were implemented in March 2024 on the March rating list. So the changes had a lot of impact, you know, a big impact in the player ratings and a lot of um, tweaks in the rating related regulations and so on. So in terms of rating, a lot of players, if they had checked their FIDE rating in March uh, 1, they might have surprised to see a lot of like points being added to their rating account. Um, this, this was especially for players rated under 2000. So what FIDE basically did is any player under 2000 rating, they gave them uh, free rating points. So why did they give free rating points is uh, because uh, FIDE realized that, you know, there has been over the years um, because of all the regulations, ratings and everything. There has been a rating deflation. We normally hear inflation, but this time around there was a rating deflation, which means basically FIDE is trying to say that the overall rating is not going up, as in like in the top level, you know, players' rating is all sliding down in the long run. And this is connected with some of the rule changes they made long ago. Like they brought the FIDE rating floor, like as in the entry level rating to 1,000. So, you know, the FIDE rating floor used to start from 1,000. 
like when I got my FIDE rating floor, it used to be like uh, 1800. This was in 2003, I'm talking. At the time, actually, it was 2000, and then they just dropped it to 1800. So my initial rating was like 1975 at that point less so like, like when i got my first rating i was some in a way slightly lucky because exactly they dropped the floor to 1800 i got a rating of 1975 but progressively to bring in more and more federated players what they did they dropped it to 1600 then 1400 then 1200 then 2000 so basically you can start rating of 1000 means you all you had to do was you had to play in some rating tournament score one or two points against rated players and you'll get a fide rating it was very kind of very easy, straightforward. But what ended up happening, that created a huge mass of federated players in the entry level itself. So what then, as time you know progressed, a lot of these players were stuck there or they were taking points from stronger players, but you know their, the rating system was not properly working that way. And overall rating started coming down. So what FIDE did this time, they said, okay, uh, the rating floor going forward is going to be set at 1400 starting March 2024. So the lowest rated player will, will be like 1400. So then what will you do to the players who are rated like 1000 or 1100? Uh, or like, you know, you can't uh, underrate them. You can't remove their rating or something because they've earned their rating earlier. So what FIDE did, FIDE came up with a formula so that they are giving, uh, you know, up to 400 points for like free, not everyone. There's a certain formula to it. So based on your current rating, and then they use the apply the formula. So there have been players who got like you know 150 points jump. This is without playing any tournament or anything in in that for that March rating list. Even if they did not play any tournament, they had some 150 points or 200 points gain. Some players, some got like 30, 40 points gain, and so on. So they have made this rating jump. Uh, like uh, so the lowest rated player now can be only a 1400, no more than that. Less than that is not possible. Like. 1399 and all you won't see any rated player you know at this point so this was a very big change uh this was mainly as i said to address that rating deflation problem and a few other changes also they have brought related to this one of it is that you know they've um, ensured there is thing called 400 point rule so what it is is let's say if i am rated 2600 and if i play someone 2100 you know there's a rating difference of 500 rating points so if I beat someone like that, you know, they I used to get like 0 0.8 rating points because that's a rating difference of 400 or higher in that situation. So initially it used to be like anyone you beat 400 or lower, 400 rating points or lower, you are getting consistently like 0 0.8. I believe it's 0 0.8. I might be slightly wrong. Uh, 0 0.7 or I think it's 0 0.8 just. Uh, so 0 0.8. But then what they ended up, uh, they made a tweak some years ago saying, uh, if you beat like, let's say 10 players of 0 0.8, then you get like eight points, right? They said, no, 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 this is not fair. Like you should, like we will limit it to per tournament. You can like, you know, um, play uh, like only like, I think two times we'll count that 0 0.8 rule. After that, even if you beat a lower rated player, 400 points lower than you, it doesn't add any rating to you. Like how many times ever you play. So this was also one reason why that rating deflation happened. So in Indian Open tournaments, we know like, you know, a lot of underrated play, a lot of rounds you have to play lower rated players, right? So when you have to play lower rated players, a lot of rounds, you will keep beating them. You will get like one point on your score, but you'll gain no rating because they, there's no rating added because they are like 400 or more points lower rated than you. So this role uh, kind of was a big... Uh, discussion and debate players were not liking it they were like i win up opponent i put all the effort i win but i still get zero rating points i mean it's unfair i'm beating a rated player if i beat an unrated player not getting any rating point is fine but when i'm beating a rated player i should get something for that so they decided okay we'll go back to the same old rule so whoever you beat that 400 point rule gets applied and uh that 0 0.8 you will get. It does not matter if you played one opponent or two opponent or five opponents in the same tournament. Every game you will get that 0 0.8. So with this way, you know, uh, uh, it is, I think, kind of fair enough because there used to be funny incidents where some players would go like eight and a half out of nine, like nine rounds tournament means they would have scored eight and a half out of nine. They would have won the tournament outright. Eight wins, one draw. And they would have still lost Peter rating. It, it should be it should be crazy to think of because you beat but the imagine 
they are going to some very like you know not just active country they have some rated tournament and they play let's say they are like 2300 2400 im and the whole audience or players are like 1800 and then one game they accidentally made a draw like somehow or they maybe they were not interested they thought okay last round i'll make a quick draw i'll win the tournament but that one draw would have made them lose like you know like 6 7 points 5 to 6 points let's say right and uh, one they would have gained only 0.8 for two players whom they won because all other games fee they would not have counted so you would have still lost like three or four rating points when you win a tournament outright like eight and a half out of nine like so much dominance and still you end up losing rating it was quite ridiculous and it happened quite a few times like many instances this was happening players were pointing out like a player is giving absolute best and still they lose rating means something is not right about the rating system so this was the major uh, changes that fide did the rating floor change and also the uh as i was mentioning this uh you know this 400 point rule which they brought back then so these is the major change there were one or two minor tweaks additionally i believe but those are uh, not i believe um that important right now yeah recently saw that many new videos have been uploaded at the uh, chess culture's youtube channel and the class info have been updated at the website so are there any new programs coming up and would you like to share some uh, forthcoming announcement at chess culture uh yes aswath so we have a bunch of uh, programs lined up for summer because summer uh, you know school holidays are all approaching so we have summer camps scheduled um, and we have uh, two for uh, indian specific time zones like india singapore uae so kids in the time zones can participate um we have one in april and another in may and uh, uh, as of now these are these details are already live on chesgaja's website under the group classes if they click we also have some other camps planned for uh, kids in us time zone around us canada that time zone those are uh, scheduled for june july kind of time uh, around that time and uh, so these are mainly targeted for kids who want to get introduced to the game for the first ever time like they they don't know the rules or anything they want to learn or they know the rules but have never really played a tournament they've just learned it from their parents or friends but have no formal knowledge of chess that way so we have like two groups in each like batches that we have in summer camps and summer camp uh, is the kind of the the new program we've launched this time around and other than that we have our usual classes like we have group classes ongoing on a monthly basis uh for these are for like you know players who are around the rating strength of 600 to 1000 or 1000 to 1500 we have two groups like split by the chess level so those are ongoing classes those are uh, for you know say similarly india singapore uae these time zones there is a program and us kids they have uh, their time their american friendly time program and there is also a master class which is ongoing for the past two to three months where i i personally take classes so these classes right now are mainly for players rated above 1400 and what we do in the, the master class is um kind of like the format is slightly interesting in comparison to most of other classes so we also have a play uh, session included in it what i mean by that is we'll have a position for discussion and then the players will play it out uh, like the participants will play it out and then they'll form an opinion or idea of about the position uh, and then we will see what really happened in the game so then they can real time compare okay what was their thought process before that knowledge happens like where we where i explain okay this is what happened in the game this is what you did like you know what are the difference in approach the strong player did compare them to this so most of the times that is how these master classes like when i take that's the format we follow so those are ongoing and uh, it's going on right now in march as well uh, when and in april also we have those those details all the group class posters as usual they can see it on our group class page on cheskaja so if they go to cheskaja website and click at group class they'll find it and also we regularly post all this on our social media pages be it facebook instagram uh, youtube or uh, uh, even twitter or linkedin we post this we also have a dedicated uh, whatsapp group where they can you know we don't spam them we don't we don't post like unnecessary stuff we post whenever we have programs so if parents want to be part of the group so where they can uh, 
get these updates you know then they can just be joining those groups and their information is also like like fully hidden as in like they like not every participant can see other participants phone number or anything it's like a whatsapp group where you only get information your phone number is not accessible for other participants or anything as such so it's also privacy wise it's very good for the part uh, people who want to be part of the group so they can either join the group and get the updates or if not uh, just keep uh, as uh, keep looking at our website where we update these programs and all this these are the main things at uh, shesgaja in terms of classes right now uh, we made a lot of technology changes um, in terms of how the classes are delivered uh, I believe uh, in a separate session, I can explain those because that would be another long 10, 15 minutes. I think we'll do some other session later where I can explain those technology wise, what some changes we made on Chess Gaja. Yeah. Yes, we will have another session discussing in depth about Chess Gaja's new technological improvements. And those who want the link for these programs can check out Chess Gaja's website, link of which you will find in the description along with all the links of our socials. Thank you for watching everyone. It is a new series. So we are eagerly looking for your feedback so that we can improve and deliver better content to you. Yeah, so, so this was a good, I think, first uh, episode kind of thing. So obviously that might be, uh, you know, to the audience who are watching it, uh, small issues or feedback, whatever. Please put, feel free to comment it. Uh, uh, you know, we definitely want to improve it and, you know, add more segments and... Uh, do it in a much more interactive way so uh, definitely whatever comments uh, be it technical or do you want to see something more specific in coming videos some specific segments of chess or something please let us know we want we are planning to do it at this at a regular um, intervals this kind of a interaction so all feedback would be highly appreciated and uh, yes it, uh, it was a great session to feel like for the first time yeah.